Hello, let's talk Shakespeare, oh yeah, and how we do it in a Charlotte Mason homeschool and how that's different to the English National Curriculum. So if you're interested in Shakespeare or you want to find out more about how the Charlotte Mason method works in practice, keep watching. Okay, so big confession, I am a total Shakespeare fan. However, my education in Shakespeare at school was woeful. It was, it was lame. I did two plays, we did Othello and Hamlet, and I think I memorized some of Romeo and Juliet. I loved Shakespeare, but it was just not good enough. When I left school, I took any opportunity that I could to go and see Shakespeare plays live. One of my favourites was A Midsummer Night's Dream at the AOT Centre in Auckland, performed by the Royal Shakespeare Company. They did an amazing job with no props, no staging, just a swing I think it was, and fantastic actors and just the sheer genius of the script. It was awesome. So naturally, when I stumbled across the Charlotte Mason method when we were exploring how we were going to home educate our kids and I saw how she taught Shakespeare, I was like, yes, please, that's what I want. So in a typical Charlotte Mason approach, children begin Shakespeare really young. My youngest is five and he is part of our Shakespeare lessons. At, at the younger age, it's all just about getting to grips with the story, the characters, building uh, like a sense of familiarity with those characters and the stories so that when they're a bit older and they come back to it, they've kind of got something in their memory they can draw on. But young children will study Shakespeare. Typically when a child would be say year four or five, nine, ten, that's when they would begin putting Shakespeare into their formal study and it would be its own subject. So in Charlotte Mason schools, Shakespeare was not shoved under English, it was its own subject. And like all subjects in a Charlotte Mason approach, it's about 20 minutes a lesson. You're not having an hour long, you're taking a short lesson, just trying to really focus and give your best attention for a short period of time. So the first thing that struck me as being vastly different to how the majority of schools uh, teach Shakespeare is that children begin to learn a lot younger, so age nine and 10, as I said, but they also do three plays a year three plays a year, one every term. So if you start when you're 10 and you do three plays a year up to the age of 17, that's 21 plays. That's a whole lot more than you're gonna get in school. So in the English National Curriculum, you are expected to do two Shakespeare plays in Key Stage 3, so that's year seven, eight, and nine, and you would typically do at least one play in Key Stage 4 or GCSEs, sometimes two, and then if you did English literature for A level, you would obviously do more. But the average student in an English school, state school, is gonna do three to four plays in their school career. In a Charlotte Mason school, if they stuck with that approach for the entirety of their education, they would be doing well over 20 plays. Now, another big difference is the way that it's taught. So the Charlotte Mason method really is trying to get you to understand the big picture of what's happening in the play, to understand what the characters are doing, and to be able to have that as like treasure that stays in the storehouse of your memory. It's about enabling children to become adults who can engage in the richness of cultural conversation and understand when someone makes an allusion to Julius Caesar or someone quotes something from Richard III, they actually can reference that in their mind and not just that they're going, oh, I don't know, like most of us. So how do we do it? Really simple. You start with a story version of the play. I found this one in an Oxfam shop for £1.50 two weeks ago. It's absolutely beautiful and it's just a story version, not very long. I could read it in one sitting, but they get the big gist of what's happening. Once we've understood who the main characters are and generally what's going on, we go into a more detailed retelling of the story. So I'm using Tales from Shakespeare by Charles and Mary Lamb. This is slightly more sophisticated language, but it's a really good way to get accustomed to that more sophisticated language. Sebastian did not at all object to the fondness the lady lavished upon him. 
he seemed to take it in very good part. Yet he wondered how it had come to pass, and he was rather inclined to think Olivia was not in her right senses. But perceiving that she was mistress of a fine house, and that she ordered her affairs, and seemed to govern her family discreetly, and that in all but her sudden love for him she appeared in the full possession of her reason, he well approved of the courtship. And Olivia, finding Cesario in this good humour, and fearing that he might change his mind, proposed that, as she had a priest in the house, they should be instantly married. So we'll do Shakespeare once a week. Once we've read the story version first, the simple story, and we get onto the more complicated story, and then they retell back to me what has happened in that scene or in that part of the story, and we made little puppets. So they absolutely loved making puppets and kind of putting down on paper their own interpretation of what these characters look like. And then when it came to retelling or narrating back what was happening in the play, they would get the puppets out. It was so much fun, they have really, really enjoyed doing it this way. As the children get older and more mature, they begin to actually look at the text, original text from Shakespeare himself and they would just study and read through a short portion of it. What you're not doing though, is pulling the text apart, like putting it under a microscope. Shakespeare wrote his plays to be enjoyed. He wrote them so that people could come and watch them. No one went home from the globe with a transcript and sat at home and go, hmm, now I wonder what this word means and what's the kind of nuance of this sentence. They were plays, that's what they were. And in the Charlotte Mason method, you're really trying to engage with it as a play, not just as a text. The goal is not to get the child or the young person as they get older to write a really perfectly well-formed essay explaining what's going on in it. It's simply to help um, the wonder of the stories live in their imagination, live in their heart. And so we read a simple story, then we read a slightly more complicated story, we narrate it back using puppets, we tackle parts of the text. Because I've got younger children, we don't do that too much, but as they get older into their teens, they would read through the whole of the script. And then you watch a play. If you can, it's all about getting out, seeing it performed live, nothing beats that. But if we can't do that, then it's finding a good DVD version, a good film version of the play to watch as well. In addition, Children also engage with Shakespeare through recitation. So my children every week have different things that they have to recite, which is about standing up and speaking clearly and learning how to articulate yourself. And they each have a passage of Shakespeare from the play that we're doing that they have to recite. And they do Shakespeare copy work. So every day they do a portion of copy work and once a week thrown in there is some Shakespeare. So they are slowing down and they are writing Shakespeare's words out. So in a Charlotte Mason school, you do a lot more Shakespeare in terms of quantity. You're gonna tackle 20 plays. In a school setting, typically the English national curriculum, you're gonna do three or four plays. In a school system, you're gonna delve much more uh, in depth into analyzing the text and you're gonna be expected to be able to write some essays that argue your points. In a Charlotte Mason uh, school, you're gonna just engage with the text and enjoy them and let the stories live in your heart and live in your mind. Children do get examined though, so the sorts of questions that I might ask my slightly older children at the end of the term would be, tell me about one of the characters in the play that we studied, what did you um, find most interesting about this character, or something open-ended but they have to put down on paper how they've engaged with the play themselves. So, I hope that's helped. Let's have fun with Shakespeare. Little children can grasp it. I would say though, parents use their discretion, you know, because Shakespeare tackles some adult themes. There's violence, there's gore, there's just mess. Some of it is not appropriate for really young children. So it's all about picking the plays that match your children's maturity. I hope that's helped and I hope that encourages some of you parents out there. You can do Shakespeare, it's not difficult and please subscribe if you find this helpful. Thanks, bye!